Toronto Tech people. This is great, isn't it? How about a round of applause to the organizers of this event? This is awesome. All right, I feel like naked without technology on my feet. <laughs> anyway. So today, what I'm going to talk about is the most important lesson I learned in business. The most important lesson I learned in business. In fact, it's become the central organizing principle for my life. Do you know, want to know what it is? Yes. Yeah, okay, it's this. Build advocates and mobilize them. It's all you have to do to be successful in life. You ready? Build advocates and mobilize them, and you will be successful. Do you believe me? All right, I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. All right, first, there's a lot of stuff on this. I, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. All right, so I got my start, uh, my third business, 1994. I was 20 years old, and I got to start in the painting business. Do you guys, have you guys heard of College Pro? I wasn't good enough to get to College Pro. <laughs> so I got hired by a knockoff called Metro Pro, <laughs> which I guarantee nobody in this room has ever heard of. Okay, so they taught me the painting business. I went all through their training, and one of the things that they really impressed upon me was the importance of getting testimonials from every single customer. It was really, really important. And then they told me that I had to pay 25% of the gross back to them for their amazing brand name. So what would you do? Yeah, organized painting services. That's exactly right. Now, for anyone who knows me, that's hilarious because I'm not organized. I'm, I'm organized, but I'm not organized. Anyway, it's really funny. So that's what I did, and then, um, you know, in entrepreneurship, you really got to take advantage of whatever assets you might happen to have available. I didn't have much. Certainly, my brand name wasn't worth that much, and I didn't know jack about painting. That's for sure. <laughs> what I did have was a couple of really buff dudes who were on the painting team. So one day I had an idea. I was like, why don't you guys take your shirts off? <laughs> Start going painting that way. And, and so they did, and... That generated a lot of word of mouth. <laughs> and also a one like almost sexual harassment lawsuit. But we'll get into that. But anyway, so I learned about the power of word of mouth. And then a few years later, I started Eloqua. And uh, Eloqua, I started that in the year 2000. I was 25 years old. Um, and I was really interested in this word of mouth thing because I saw it work so well for the painting company. I didn't have people who were that, like, you know, in that company. So I had to try to do something different. Um, and nothing that I tried really generated this kind of advocacy at scale until we created this, like, award ceremony. It was kind of like the Academy Awards for marketing. We called it the Markies. It wasn't named after me. <laughs> it was named after marketing. But, um, and so, like, we... we got these trophies, it was the same trophies that like the, the company that for the, the Academy Awards that, that they use, these 20 pound trophies, and we bestowed it upon these people. Um, and we celebrated and elevated their success. And what we found was that they returned the favor back to us with a deluge of advocacy. And we got so many referrals, so many references and stories and all this great stuff that we actually weren't counting on. And the light bulb went off my head. I said, this is something really interesting. And I filed it away because I wasn't going to have a chance to work on it at that company. But I did have a chance um, at Influitive a few years later, after some time in the wilderness. Uh, and I really wanted to attack this idea of generating advocacy at scale. And so I interviewed like hundreds of these people you might call super advocates. These are people who do over 200 pieces of advocacy a year. And I asked them a very simple question. What would it take for you to triple the amount of activity that you do today on behalf of a company, a product, a brand, a person that you love? And they told me all the kinds of things that I heard about, that I learned about from this Marquis Awards. They wanted recognition and they wanted social capital. They wanted to feel good about themselves. They wanted to look good to their peers. They wanted to feel good about themselves. I said, all right, I'm going to go build a company around that. Right, so one of the first lessons about building a company is be an expert in a certain niche area. I literally interviewed over 800 people to go and get this insight. You probably would have got it much sooner, but it took me a while. Um, and so the idea was this. By creating an amazing experience for advocating, like really, how awesome is it to refer? Like, does that really feel that great? Normally, no, right? Um, we made that experience amazing. We have an amazing advocate experience with uh, our software product, and in return, things are actually going pretty well. So 
Uh, you guys heard of Marshall McLuhan? What you doing, Marshall McLuhan? Okay, he said the medium is the message. This, this has two minutes left. Um, really, it does. <laughs> The medium is the message, okay? Well, he said that in the age of television, okay? The age of television, that was an amazing time when marketers could literally program their audience. You're sitting there looking back at the commercial, you're literally getting programmed. Well, how many of you enjoy being programmed? Not really, right? Right, we're in a new environment today. How many people really enjoy going delete, 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 delete with all those emails that are flooding your inbox? Probably not really, right? So we're in this environment today in this, the new, the new medium is the social web, and we want a different experience as buyers. Right? We want experience being surrounded by trust and transparency. These days, the messenger is the message. So that's what I have to say. If you focus your attention on just building advocates, not just for your company, but for yourself, right? make sure your kids are advocates for you, make sure your parents are advocates for you, make sure your employees are advocates for you, Right? If all you do is focus on building them and then providing them with the means to mobilize, you'll do well in life. That's all I have to say. Thanks. All right. We got some questions. Give me a hoverboard. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> How, how did you feel about Aloqua being sold to Oracle? <laughs> um, or acquired by or whatever. That's a very good question. I felt bittersweet about that. I was not the CEO at the time. I was uh, in the wilderness somewhere. Uh, there was another guy running a company. Um, I felt bittersweet about that. On one hand, I felt sweet because a number of my employees got wealthy. There were uh, like something like 52 millionaires created out of that transaction, which made me feel very special. And even though I wasn't the CEO anymore, I did feel like I had a hand in that. On the other hand, I think that could have been a $10 billion company, not a $1 billion company, and I think there were some mistakes made after I left, so I felt bitter about that. And I think that a lot of people that worked with me would rather not work for Larry Ellison. <laughs> All right, next question. I hope there's no eloquent people here in the room. They're actually a really important customer or partner of mine. I love you guys. I love you, Oracle. Okay, next. <laughs> hey, Mark, thanks for your talk. Thanks. What, if anything, did you learn from going out in the wilderness? <laughs> um, so some of the practical things that I learned was uh, I learned about social gaming, which actually became part of the guts of my application today, so that was really cool. Um, I also had a lot of time to ruminate upon my many mistakes and to um, focus much more on people this time. So when I was running Eloqua, we were, um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but we were a bootstrapped company for a long time. We did not raise any money. We were just trying to survive another quarter. Uh, and my focus was really on building customer success. And honestly, that's a great place to focus your attention, right? build advocates and mobilize them, but I learned um, too late in my experience there that it's the people in my company that create the value for companies. And I didn't put enough attention on them, and I felt very bad about that, and I uh, spent a lot of time really thinking about how I could do a better job next time in building the best, most engaged workforce in the world, which I believe that we're on our way to doing. Um, so, yeah, I learned a lot of other things, but those are the two of the main ones. Thanks. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, you said that the messenger is the message, but what kind of message are you trying to get out to other people? Is it quality of product or friendliness of service or what? I think what the message is, right, is that people, people want to hear from their peers, right, more than anything else. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to hear from companies that much. So um, in contrast to other media from times before, whether it was television and then sort of internet ads and then email, um, I think that is the message of our time and it's more and more the case. In fact, there are a number of companies that have been born in the last couple years that were born around a community first. And I would say for those of you who are thinking about starting a company, I would really think about starting a company this way, 
right? I mean, does Tesla spend anything at all on traditional marketing? You know, none. They have no commission sales reps. Um, there's a company called OnePlus based in China that uh, makes handsets. It's one of the fastest growing companies in the world. And their first product wasn't a handset. It was an online community. They asked people, what do you want in a phone? And they listened to them, and they built something around their needs. And that community is what's distributing the product. And uh, they had 300 million in sales in 2014, and they spent $300 on marketing. Seriously, $300 on marketing. That was probably for like their registration of websites, stuff like that. Um, so I think that that really is the message of our time, and it's going to become only more and more true um, as, uh, as time goes on. Yeah, last question. Last question. Nice. Hi, Mark. My name is Evan. Thank you for your speech. Hope you're hiring. And um, uh, we are. Yes. For that, departments. though, in the theme of, of Tech Toronto, what um, maybe kind of what was maybe one positive, maybe one negative, or just two positives, if you're in that kind of mood, to having done this entire company in Toronto. You know, not going to the valley. Was that ever a decision you had to make, or was it just like Toronto? Yeah, no, I love building a company here, but you know, we're not just a Toronto company. And I would say to those people who are thinking about building a company here, if you're just going to be here, you're probably going to be dead. <laughs> because this is still a small city at the end of the day, right? So uh, yes, this is a headquarters and I love building a company here. I love being a bigger fish in a small pond. I love the high quality of people that are here. I love that you have engineers that actually understand something about business and actually care about the company, right? I love that. I love the fact that this place is not full of mercenaries. It's full of people who really believe, right? You've got passion. Like, I think that's freaking awesome. So I love that, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. But at the same time, I've got a dozen people in the Valley. I've got 20 people in Boston, right? We're going to be in Europe and Asia later on this year. Um, and... Look, these days, if you're going to build a SaaS company as we are, and you're not going to have like a foot in a valley, that's going to hurt, right? Because that's where your future competition is going to come from. That's where a lot of money is going to come from. That's where, that's where a lot of the best potential partners are. It's where the best BD people are in the world. Um, and so, unfortunately, it means kind of like Heather, you're going to be on, on planes a lot um, to spend some time there. But that's what I would recommend is to be a global company, and that is one of the great advantages that we have here in Toronto. This is the most global city in the world. Did you know that? Yeah, it's the most global city in the world, right? There are people who speak just about every language in the world that's over here, right? So we were born global ad and fluid. Our employee number two is based in California, right? And I think that is one of the great strengths that we have here, and it's the way that we beat companies in the Valley. We kick Valley ass every fucking day at our company, okay? Every day. Um, and that's because we leverage the strengths of where we are in Toronto, but we also leverage the strengths of all the different geographies in which we play in. So I'd recommend for those entrepreneurs in the room that you think doing likewise. I think it's the way to success. All right, thank you.